So you want to know about life, liberty, and the pursuit of the American vacation? Well, you're in the right place. We're in the Grand Canyon with Chevy Chase. Chevy, welcome. Thank you. And although it's been raining a lot out here, you've spent some time in the Grand Canyon before, I understand. Oh, yeah. We shot a good deal of the film here. We won't give away one of the gags in the film about what the Grand Canyon has to do with the movie, but this pursuit of the American vacation. Let's, let's go to that. now. Christy. You're, no, Christy. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's another dream. She always wants to be on um, camera. Dear old dad here is going to pack up the car, the kids, the wife, and head out for the West. Now, you're playing a character who's a kind of a conformer now. You're not a rebel here. You're, you're Mr. Joe Blow, average family man. Ever since the, that Kramer thing, I've, <laughs> I've tried to get more, you know, less rebellious. If you have an image, though, uh, I guess I think of your comedy coming out of a certain yeah, rebellious note. That's true. Here it's the opposite. Where it's, where's the comedy here? Uh, there isn't any comedy in this uh, because of the lack of rebellion. But uh, no, the rebellion is in the kids, I think, now. Mm -hmm. I have kids in this who are 13 and uh, 14 or 15. In fact, when you and Beverly D'Angelo sing, uh, we're singing in the back seat. Yeah, that's right. They're listening to the punk stuff or the. Uh, um, uh, when you say where's the comedy in this, is it, it's is it substan sub substantive, exactly. substantially different from Caddyshack or something of that nature, <laughs> which incidentally was directed by the same director, Harold Ramis. Well, everything very much of that is style is still in this. Yeah. Everything was off the wall, but here. You but were, here we're really staying with a storyline, exactly. which is something I think that everybody can relate to when Dad takes the family uh, either to the country for the weekend or in this case across the entire country to go to the very infamous Wally World Fun Park, to the Disneyland yeah. type of a... And, and it was identified as Disneyland in the original story, as a matter of I fact. I think in the original... Was that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but not the script, yeah, in the original story, yeah. But it's, it's one Somewhere. thing for humor to arise out of craziness and crazy characters, but you portray a very sternly middle-of-the-road family man. That's what I meant. Of, where is the comedy? Well, the comedy is in his, uh, his lack of self-awareness and in his ineptitude. I mean, he is one of these dads who really would like it to be for the kids. Kids, we're going to go across the country and we're going to see it firsthand. Dad, we'd just like to fly. We'd get there in two weeks, you know, instead of driving for two weeks, let's just get to Wally. I want you to see the House of Mud kids and the, the historical points along the way. And <laughs> well, you it's clearly the dad who, who is, isn't aware of the fact that he wants to have the fun, that he's the guy who, uh, who wants to relive his own childhood and make a vacation finally work for him, because apparently as a child he had tried this several times. Well, you do have an odd sense of selection about what you want to see. Well, Not the Grand you know, it's Canyon living so history, much. that House of Mud, you want to get there. <laughs> Well, we catch uh, the Dodge City and uh, the Grand Canyon and some of the uh, more amazing sites, the Monument Valley. A lot of physical action here. Uh, when you're asleep at the wheel, for example, moments like that. Um, when you have these encounters with Christy Brinkley, let's call that physical comedy, okay. too. Uh, their old dad is displaying some sides of his character that's not quite as middle class and conservative as you might think. Yeah, uh, and, uh, but the kids aren't quite as... Uh, ignorant of those things as you might think and they aren't in fact I mean if there's one thing about this picture that amazes me is that it would be rated uh, an R as opposed to a PG because of some language thing kids know language like they've heard that so many times over and over that that isn't even an issue there's not we don't have violence like uh, Death Wish 8 or you know that kind of uh, rank nudity and sexual situations that Christy and I have at one point in the picture. <laughs> well, let's talk but, about that because you have a conversation with your boy in the film in which he seems to be quite aware of the situation. Yeah, he's a, a little bit more sophisticated than I thought, you know, and uh, <laughs> that comes out all through the picture. It's kind of my learning from him. Tell me, though, what I see in He puts down a beer like this exactly. when I think I'm sure I'm the first beer, yeah. In conclusion, though, you seem to be a potentially very neurotic character. Yeah. Uh, I play of, myself. <laughs> Chevy Chase, the ultimate American dream. Is it the vacation after all? National Lampoon vacation with Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo. We're going to be back after these words to talk to Beverly D'Angelo, so hang on. Okay, keep going. All right. Now I'm Beverly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, except it'll be a different kind of focus here. Okay. Star of National Lampoon Vacation, Chevy Chase, is here with us today. We're out at the Grand Canyon. Nice view back here, a little cloudy. <laughs> Chevy, although we're here to talk about National Lampoon Vacation, I hoped I could steal a few minutes with you to talk about another project that you're working on. I guess you finished the shooting now with William Friedkin. Oh, uh, yeah, Deal of the Century. That'll be out in the fall. Now, here's an abrasive director, controversial. Oh, I'm going to say that. Okay, yeah, he, uh, he I'm going to say all that. He's a very detailed, meticulous, uh, fantastic director and this is some, the first time I've had to uh, act 
you know, really act beyond my uh, means. I mean, this is not Chevy makes funny all the time. It's, it is a black comedy, and it's about a, a weapons dealer, and it's a very uh, timely picture. How would you describe the confrontation of you and Mr. Friedkin initially? Did you mesh? Oh, uh, yeah. No, he's got a great sense of humor, and he's, uh, he's made some fantastic movies. I mean, I think The Exorcist is still one of the funniest pictures I've ever seen, and, uh, but also a great picture, the Sonny Cher movie. Uh, but The French Connection, all of those pictures are you know, really top-notch. And he's the first director, I think, that I've worked with who uh, has had that kind of extensive experience. And uh, he really worked me. The Sigourney Weaver is in it, uh -huh. Gregory Hines, actors who really are studied good actors. It's such it's, It strikes to me that so much of comedy now in our culture is very violent, is very abrasive. Uh, your work with Friedkin might seem to represent a development in that direction, maybe. Um, yeah, but I don't think there's something, anything gratuitous in this picture, uh, you know, gratuitously violent. I think that, uh, in fact, the humor in it is, is the fact that in the real world of weapons sales, uh, there is so much uh, pointless violence and so much pointless, ex pointless expenditure of funds and money and under the table payments for, for weapons that really don't work the way we thought they would. You got your F-15, 16, 17, 18s. Things that can only really, when you load them up, fly 23 miles, let's say, and <laughs> so that the uh, what he's pointing out is that there's a there's a there's a real uh, and it's kind of frightening, but there's a real comedy in the world of the arms dealer, and it really takes place. It's a, it's a movie about ineptitude, uh, what it is in in, in uh, dealing of weapons of, between countries that perpetuates uh, the dealing of more weapons and the building of a different kind of charged particles is the next thing you try to sell after you've sold. A, uh, a peacemaker or a peacekeeper or whatever. And this is a black comedy. Yeah, it's a strange love uh, type of a picture. And as you describe this, I'm reminded of incidents in National Lampoon Vacation, where as dear old dad, you're very capable of violence and handling firearms as well. Does this kind of comedy frighten you? Do you see it as indicative of something maybe serious going on? Um, it's a thin line. Uh, with, with Bill Friedkin, uh, you really have to read between the lines, too. I mean, it, you'll laugh. There's no question about it. There are some very broad and funny com comedic things. But that's a serious subject, and uh, that's where the thin line is. And you have to sort of divide according to your own uh, perspective. Uh, the violence in, that you speak of in Vacation, I'm not real clear on, uh, beyond, of course, the BB pistol I have. But uh, I mean, I don't <laughs> slap my kids around for my wife in an onion cellar. It's directed at a particularly vulnerable spot, however. Uh, that's right, yes. Uh, John Candy can't miss that barn door. <laughs> well, if anything, the violence as it erupts in Lampoon is even watered down from the violence in the original story. So that direction was there from the very beginning. That's right. This was based on a uh, story that was written for the magazine uh, called Vacation 58. And uh, we uh, adapted it, basically, from John Hughes' original uh, story to a screenplay that's 1983. Or 84. <laughs> Something like Doesn't matter what year. <laughs> Chevy Chase, Man of Normalcy, Comedy, Violence, National Lampoon Vacation, and coming up, Deal of the Century with William Friedkin. Chevy, thank you so much for visiting with me here. Thank you. I see you.